What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. Wonk7, back again with another vlog review. <clears throat> now, it's been a very, very long journey for me when I got Vagrant Story. It's a short game, actually, but you could... You have an infinite amount of New Game Pluses, and you can cycle through it a lot to get as many stat boosts as you need and if you have difficulties with one post game boss this will really be the means for you to get ahead but well, the reason this game took such a long time for me in terms of the months I spent playing it was because in between Final Fantasy 10 was on sale, Square had a sale and I got the 10, 10 2 remastered version and I spent a whole month and a half focusing on that instead. But when I got out of the way with that shit, I came back to Vagrant Story. I finished it up. I defeated Asura. And then later that same day, I defeated her time trial version. And that to me was the end of that. I didn't have any more challenges after that. So I stopped playing Nymph Otter to get the best weapons, the best armor, because the statistics on that, it's a 3 out of 255 drop, it's not worth it. But this was a game that I've wanted to play since I saw a long play on it back in June of 2014, and it was in between this and Chrono Cross... Zeno Gears, those were the games I wanted to play, and one by one I took all of them out of the way. Meaning that I really did sink a lot of time into this just to get those two out of the way. I would say that I probably spent the most time on Zeno Gears, but I was probably the most deep into. Chrono Cross. You know, I, I just like games with Yasunori Mitsuda composing it. I don't know why, maybe it's because he's the best in my opinion. Yeah, this is a game I've known about since 06. Known about it for a while. Never felt like playing it, but. When I saw that long play, I was thinking, man, this game is hot. I've seen videos of it before. I thought Sydney's a cool anti-hero, and Final Boss looked type vicious. But other than that, it didn't look like something that was for me. So I saw that long play, of course. Now, first thing... You might ask is, what is Vagrant Story? Vagrant Story is an action JRPG directed by Yasumi Mitsuno with a lot of strategy elements. There's a lot of micromanaging for your weapons. You have to take into consideration things like your risk. If that gauge moves up, you're more likely to miss attacks get critical hits and receive critical hits so that's and that builds up anytime you attack anytime you use chained up combos this isn't a hack and slash action RPG it's not like Secret of Mon Secret of Mana wasn't that hack and slash anyway it isn't like Legend of Mana or Kingdom Hearts or any of those games no when you get ready to attack an enemy, a grid shows up like in Parasite Eve, you select a limb, and then during the attack animation, there's an exclamation point that goes up, and at that point, you have one tenth of a second to hit the button, and you can chain a combo depending on which chain attacks you've set, and that's really how you deliver a lot of damage in this game. I really like the combat because it's an action RPG with strategy elements. I'm usually thinking there's a lot of tiles in this game. 
gives you a very strategy RPG esque vibe, even though every step you take doesn't move you to a tile. Movement in this game is very natural, which I'm appreciative of. And overall, I love the combat in this game. The only problem with it is that the game design was terrible because there was no way you were going to understand the deep mechanics of this game just by playing it. They really should have set it up so that you would understand the mechanics piece by piece. However, I get the impression that the people that developed this game don't understand how brilliant and deep the mechanics of your own game really is. It's a it's a really deep game. So I'm gonna I'm gonna advise you guys to look up the beam up guide from it was last updated in twenty thirteen. That was a good FAQ walkthrough for the combat mechanics. Everything else they give really bad advice when it comes to this game. They'll advise you to focus on the class of enemy. So if you have a weapon, you should specify it for that one specific class. Maybe use spears for spheres for dragons or rapiers. Maybe use I'd say a mace for a golem. Or a minotaur, or an ogre, or things of that nature. Don't do that. Don't limit a weapon to a specific class. What really matters when it comes to dealing with damage for the weapon, for the shields, yeah, you can set gems to make it for a specific class, but what really matters for offense, it is. Affinity, you know, elemental attributes, and weapon type. Is it a blunt weapon? Is it a piercing weapon? Is it a edged weapon? That's the only shit that matters. Everything else is just there to trick you. And that's why I think this game kind of fucks with you. Because initially you'd think that it's all about the class, that it's very important, but class has like one fourth of the power as a affinity or type does in this game it's not worth it another thing is this game tricks you sometimes into thinking it's not a JRPG but trust me this is an RPG you will get stronger over time if you do a new game plus you're not gonna have a more difficult time in the new game or be more or less the same no you will be a lot more strong if you take wines, elixirs, and if you get like good stat bonuses after every boss fight, because that's the only time you really get stat boosts in this game outside of the items. It's from defeating a boss, and then a roulette wheel spins, you get the circle button, and you get whatever. You get hit points, MP, intelligence, agility, or and strength. I usually go for strength because... I hate like doing little damage to my enemies. And to be honest, even though magic in this game is actually really useful, I never bothered with it. Again, no matter what, I'm always going to be a brute force player. I understand that about myself, and I embrace it. You're not going to see me abuse magic. Or go into like warlock duels. But aside from what I said, the magic in this game is actually really good. I've used it to buff my character, Ashley Riot, debuff my enemies, heal myself, get rid of status ailments, and sometimes I'll use it to cast magic, but it's really impractical for me. I don't really like it. <clears throat> you will get stronger over time. That's one thing I have to understand. And you will find weapons and armor that are useful. I didn't really bother with the armor side of this game up until the final boss battle, which really kicked my ass. But aside from that, yeah, this this is a game where that stuff actually matters. You'd be surprised. A lot of people get intimidated by 
all the micromanaging and they go into paralysis mode don't go into paralysis mode you just play this like any other JRPGs for the most part if something has a better strength stats if something has a better whatever use that and if you need to boost the affinity or type there are gems for that trust me a lot of people stop playing this game midway through they miss out on a fantastic experience because they've been intimidated by this game and because the bad design of it really makes it so that you don't really understand let me explain what bad design is because the system for this game is really good the stages are really good well, not stages the areas in this game and the way you progress is really good but you don't learn as you play you could go through the whole game not knowing shit and I don't really like that. Um, I'd say that Final Fantasy VII had the same problem, but Final Fantasy VII was an easy game, and this is a very challenging game. This is a very arduous game. So you can't get away with it the way you would with Final Fantasy VII, where a lot of people, believe it or not, did make it all the way to the end without getting rid of their base material, the material that their characters start with. I think that's fucked up. What else? Then we go to this review the way I go with other reviews, which is it's very addictive. I beat this game and then went to New Game Plus, and when all the passageways started opening up, I became even more addicted. Graphics wise, let's talk about the visual style. This game is very ahead of its time, it's very revolutionary in the sense that aside from the opening CG cutscene everything in this game visually is in engine and at the same time it is a very cinematic experience in spite of that the only game I can compare that to is maybe like modern games like post PS2 era a lot of games have started to rely on an engine I don't see a lot of CG anymore that isn't as common as it was back then. I mean, every genre of video games had CG. Even 2003 and 4 with Mega Man X8, they used CG cutscenes or even anime cutscenes. That isn't so much the case now. Like, we rely on an engine because we don't want to throw people off with how good. Uh, CG is compared to an, an engine, and the an engine is beautiful now. Like it isn't. We don't need more than that. However, in a PlayStation One engine, going in engine would probably be considered crazy. But here, the opening cutscene when you start the game in the new game is fantastic. It's a lot of boss battles when they pull up in front of Ashley they look very intimidating there's a lot of tension in the cutscenes in terms of character dialogue everything everything looks badass and that's one thing I like about the visual style was ahead of its time now they may seem like ugly polygons now, but even now I see the beauty in them. Especially with the character designs. Now Well let me type some shit up. So is Akihiko Yoshida or Akihiko Matsui? Because this game has a popular character designer who designed the characters for Bravely Defaults, Final Fantasy's Four Heroes of Light. Oh, it's Yakihiko Yoshida, good. Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. He's like the other 
popular designer aside from Yoshitaka, Mono, and Tetsuya Nomura for a Final Fantasy series. His designs are fantastic. I like the way that... Well, I really like the way that my characters look. Uh, Ashley looks badass in spite of his cockroach hair. In spite of the fact that he has assless pants, like butt cheeks are exposed. And yes, Ashley Wright is the name of a dude. Main character is a dude. He looks like a dude. He acts like a dude, which isn't very rare, isn't very common for a JRPG. But he's he's in his late twenties, so he shouldn't be as androgynistic as a lot of characters are nowadays, because they're usually sixteen or seventeen. Sydney looks badass. Rosencrantz, Guildenstern. Character designs are all great. Usually, I uh, see. Yeah, usually Akihiko. His characters look a little bit more cartoony. The exception is Final Fantasy XII and this game, Vagrant Story. Like it doesn't look like tactics in a way, or Bravely Default. Faces more were more detailed, more structured, more gritty. Environments are really dark looking. Everything about this game has set a serious tone for itself. It doesn't look like the Mushroom Kingdom. And that said, this is a very fantastic looking game, like, in terms of design, and just the graphics themselves, it looks great. I like the darkness in the visual style, I like how much more mature and realistic the characters are, as opposed to Aki... He goes previous designs or his later designs, like Bravely Default, where faces are really round. Ashley is no Tiz by any means. He's no. He's none of that shit. Ashley looks like a badass. The characters here look badass. Merlos looks attractive as all hell. Yeah, the girls here look fire too. Two of them. All two of them. Well, actually, there's a third one. There's Nisa. And there's a blonde chick. I f keep forgetting her name. Soundtrack is composed by I hate passive English Hitoshi Sakimoto. This guy also did comp. You these guys work with Yasumi a lot. He did the soundtrack for Final Fantasy's Tactics and 12 and definitely this game what I like about him is that he usually writes multiple boss themes, multiple battle themes and they're all very tense in their own way my favorite at one point was the track when you fight the dragons and the wyverns before it was the effort track you fight the mages but sometimes I'm feeling that Kali track, that when you fight the Hindu goddesses. You know that? All the boss themes are badass. The workshop theme is not as tense, it's more calm and subdued because you're usually, you're in peace when you're in a workshop, you're not doing any battles. There's no risk of you dying outside of your own hand. And it's more calm and that theme, even when I wasn't really sucked into the soundtrack, kind of kept me glued in. It was like, it stuck in my head because it was so different from the other tense ass tracks. Regular stages when you're not fighting a boss battle, when they do have music, they usually have some creepy shit. But for the most part, this game is in silence. And that kind of adds more importance to the music and to the cutscenes in general because you usually hear 
either birds chirping when you're in town or hear some garbled noise. Hear a lot of shit like that. You hear some howling, some wind blowing, some creepy ass ambient shit that even I don't, I can't even explain. But that's where a lot of areas in this game sound like. One thing I don't agree with is that this game is a dungeon crawler, that said. In the beginning it may seem like that, but as you progress, it's not so much a dungeon crawler as it is really just a really interesting game, because there are town, because you do get into town in this game, and there's a lot of that town in there. There's like a forest, there's a lot of different stages, it's not just dungeons. But there are no towns, there are no shops. If you want items, you're gonna have to find ones in some chests, or you're gonna have to kill some enemies to drop them. If you want a new weapon and you can't get in a chest, you're gonna have to go to the workshop and combine them, craft them, build them together with a blade and a grip. That's what you have to do in this game. You gotta do everything on your own. You have to be a very independent person, because in this game, you're removed from society. The setting is in an old, dead city of Lea Monde. And that's the final thing I'm going to talk about, which is the storyline, which really reminds me of Blade Runner in a way, because you play this agent-type character with a dark pass. And Ashley is a badass. All the characters in this they all have interesting pasts. They all have interesting sides of their personality. Some are obviously scum with good intentions here and there, and others are flawed, good guys. And that's said about each and every character in this. I'd say that Merlos is the weakest, even though she's definitely my favorite looking chick in this. Even though, barring the blonde to the cleavage, because Merlot's, her only role in this, besides getting kidnapped, is peering into a lot of characters' backstories with her ability to read minds, to read into other people's hearts. That's her only skill, and it really just assists in exposition. The weakest thing about this storyline is the fact that Towards the end, especially with the ending and how confusing it can be, how much it doesn't explain things to you, how much it leaves to your own interpretation. This is a storyline that begs the question, what does it all mean? That's what Matsuno wants. But to me, it seems lazy. So he couldn't create a coherent narrative. And so he just leaves it up to the viewer's interpretation. Of all the chaotic things that have happened from the beginning to the end of this story. It really needed a triumphant point, or a triumphant like thesis, but no, instead, from beginning to end, it shows us all these interesting characters and all the crazy shit that happens, all the people that die. All the people that have to learn things about themselves that they really that really shattered her world in many ways. And for a story like this, you can't just say it's all up to you. No, that to me is an indicator that really. Matsuno really was kind of getting overwhelmed with tactics. So he had to come up with a side story. Just a really cool, superficial story on the surface. That has nothing deep within it. Because of all the interesting characters. And all of the interesting themes and the atmosphere. And everything the story gets right. The fact that it doesn't have a so what. The fact that we experience all of that and it 
really doesn't explain anything. I can't really call this a great storyline. It's a storyline with really interesting characters who do get a little bit more developed near the end. And that's about it. I mean, they kind of set this up where it could have been really good in the beginning with Sydney's plan to assassinate the Archbishop and, no, what was he called? He wasn't the Archbishop, uh, the Duke, and all this, like, very interesting stuff, but as we learn what each character's role is over time, the story kind of shoots itself in the foot. It's foot. But that said, it is a really good story if we think about it in the sense of atmosphere, in the sense of some of the themes. But you can't just tell a story with really interesting themes and a really interesting atmosphere. It needs a narrative. Unless you're going to go to... Shin Megami Tensei route, which they didn't do, of letting us really get to decide what the story is about. But we don't. There's only one ending. There's only one outcome. There's no secret ending. There's no uh, choice from the beginning to the end. The plot will resolve itself as it was meant to resolve itself. And that's what I really didn't like about this. But other than that, I've pretty much spoken about everything. This is a great game. Really good. Like, I was going to make a video on this yesterday. While well, I was done with everything in this game. But it was 18 minutes and it didn't do it justice. This is a game that you should play. That's what I want to stress here. It's cheaper than Xeno Gears and Chrono cross if we got PSN. It's not nine ninety nine and it was like five dollars. Back in the summer I think it went up a couple of cents, but other than that it's it's a fantastic piece of work. And now that I'm done with it, uh honestly I don't know where to go from here. Tactics threads of fate? Who knows, I'm still thinking. But yeah, I didn't think I was going to be able to beat this game. And when I really mastered it, and I really started to get sucked into it, that's when I knew that this had to get a great review. This was a fantastic game. Better than it needed to be. It was... I can see how people would think this is in its own league. I still wouldn't rank it above Zeno Gears, but... Gameplay wise, when you really master it, the actual combat system is easily better than any of the games I've played before. Anyway, this has been Mr. Rocka 7, and. Uh, suck my dick.